how do you save money on your winter heating bills? I'm so glad that you asked. I'm so glad that you stopped by because I know this. Know it very well. <laughs> because I live with someone that always uses utility for heat even when we're not at home. My wife. God bless her. Now, listen. We are in the winter months. Some people across the nation have experienced snow already. We haven't as of yet here in Ohio. But winter bills can get you down. Especially if you are not someone who's very wealthy uh, or very well to do. Winter bills can actually just really get you down. So how do you save significant money in the winter time? For some of you that maybe uh, have not experienced the snow yet and it's not that bad in your particular state and or city, one of the things that you should do is, excuse me for a second, winterize your home. It's simple. You've heard it stated before by weather experts and newscasters and so forth, but now Brother Teacher is going to tell you. If you have windows uh, in the wintertime, I believe that you should have fresh air. Whatever the room is, make sure that there's at least one window where you can lift it up in the wintertime and let fresh air come in. You need fresh air inside your home. You have to because your home is a box. It is a ticking time bomb full of germs. If you don't get fresh air, it's going to affect you adversely. You, your children, your pets, and so forth because all of the things outside uh, when you're out, out of doors and you come in, you bring your shoes in, your clothes in, you're bringing the elements inside your home to include the chemicals and the toxins that are underneath your shoes, on your umbrella, on your coats, where, wherever you have trafficked, you're bringing that into your home. Not to mention cooking in the home, deodorants, uh, chemicals that you use for cleaning and so forth, that's in your home. So make very certain, whatever you do, in a bedroom, make sure that there is a window that you have access to that will let up and you can let real fresh air into your home. On the lower level, if you have two floors or more, make sure that you have a living room or a dining room window that you can let up and let fresh air in. By all means, close those windows before you retire, if you can. And getting back to how to uh, winterize your home, those same windows especially the ones that you may not be letting up for the fresh air, buy you some heavy gauge plastic for your winters. I said winters. I mean your windows. You know what I mean. Go to your local hardware store. Uh, what is that place called? Home Depot, one of those places. And ask them what do they suggest as far as winterizing the windows with plastic what plastic or what grades of plastic grades meaning you know the, the mills how thick it is but you don't want a very cheap plastic you know that the air is going to still seep through you want a thick plastic to cover your windows don't worry about what the neighbors think oh you see the plastic through the window I can see the curtain I see the plastic we all know it's winter time and in some states and cities it gets really really bitter cold and we don't know what we're up against in this particular winter to come 2018-19 so we don't know so better safe than sorry as my mother used to say so cover your window your windows with plastic make sure that you have heavy curtains on top of that and that keeps the heat in and most of the cold out hopefully because if you have any sort of cracks in your foundation air has a way to find its way through cracks through any place that's compromise as does water those two things get in no matter what so you can minimize the amount of air that comes in and another thing that you can do if, if you have cracks around your window around the molding side or the wood part of the window or even the ledge get you some caulk c-h-a-u-l-k or c-h-a-l-k caulk some caulking 
sometimes it's silicone, sometimes it's a white uh, type of a uh, consistency caulk that's used for sealing holes, sealing cracks. That can also lessen the amount of air that gets inside of your windows. Now, notwithstanding, that is not the only way air gets in, cold air. If you have a house that does not necessarily have uh, insulation within the walls, you may want to caulk the lower part of your walls where you have a baseboard if there's cracks there as well. And don't forget your entry doors, front doors, side doors, back doors, and so forth, and even basement doors. Make sure that you get weather stripping. Just ask your local hardware person again for weather stripping. Tell them what kind of door you have. Do a little due diligence, a little research, and find out what it is that you need to stop air from coming inside your home. And the other thing too, uh, you may want to invest in a good space heater. I'm not talking about a $10 space heater or a $15 space heater. So follow me on this. When you're using a space heater, don't turn it on in a room that's not occupied or will not be occupied just for the sake of saying I have heat in such and such a room when I decide to go downstairs for a snack or to the kitchen for a snack you know I feel heat when I walk through here the most important place to be heated is the place where you're going to be at most of the time in your home put on some extra clothing if it's a little nippy in your house in the winter time especially when it's really way below zero freezing put on some extra clothes get used to doing that the winter will be over before you know it and you will be a lot more relieved when you see your utility bills that they're not skyrocketed and these utility companies love raising the prices during the winter time doubled I've seen it happen and I've experienced it so back on the space heater again don't put a space heater somewhere where you're not going to be at Never, ever, ever, ever turn the space heater on and leave your home. These devices have burnt down many homes. You don't need to have a space heater on when you're not at the house. Turn your thermostat down when you leave. Only turn it up to about 70. 65 for some people just depends on who you are 65 70 75 if it's really really cold and leave it at that okay if you turn it up to 80 90 degrees which is about the max on some thermostats you're looking for a very very expensive utility bill you are and if you want to pay it more power to you but if you want to save some money do what I suggested only turn your heat on and up when you're there when you leave, turn it down. Set your thermostat to where it turns itself on and off. Don't set your thermostat so high where it runs and runs and runs and runs because you have so many leaks of air in that particular room that it takes forever for the thermostat to kick off because it will never kick off to be honest because it's never going to reach the temperature that you have it set at. A lot of people don't know this. Listen. If you have your thermostat set to 75 or 80 and the room is still 60 an hour later, two hours later, guess what? There's a major leak somewhere of air, cold air coming into that room. And that thermostat is never going to turn off because that room is never going to get 70, 75 or 80. So it's just going to run. And so is your utility bill. It's going to run up. All right. Remember that if you have adjacent rooms, and it's warmer in one room than it is another one and it's a doorway and there's no door there get you a heavy curtain and hang it at that doorway to keep the heat in one room and to keep the heat in the other room that way you have a balance so for example if you have a kitchen and you have good heat in that room and you have a middle room that doesn't have as much heat because you have large ceilings or whatever put a curtain on both sides and you contain the heat in all of those rooms independently I hope it didn't lose you now the other thing too is make sure that you invest in some heavy blankets for your beds, children's beds and so forth. Get under the cover. You know, don't expect your uh, bedrooms to be a furnace. Now, if you just got it like that and you don't mind spending the money, 
again more power to you if you just want to give the utility company extra money but keep your thermostats at a reasonable temperature seal up the holes with caulking with insulation if you have to with weather stripping around the doors and windows if, if the windows can accept weather stripping and you will save yourself a surprisingly a large amount of money during the winter so I think that was all that claims my attention right now if you have any further questions or any specific questions about how to weatherize your house buyer beware don't forget this some people use their stoves to supplement their heat if your stove is gas remember if you're still using a gas stove remember gas is more expensive than electric you're going to have a high gas bill so again you might turn your stove on I'm not advocating that you do but if you turn it on turn it on while you're in there and make you sure, make sure that you're in the room while the stove is on keep it on for a small amount of time maybe 30 minutes and turn the thing off don't sleep with the stove on okay even if it's electric don't sleep with the stove on because that's a major appliance your stove and your refrigerator pull more energy than anything in your home so remember this buyer beware buyer of what specifically utility services beware these things are going to kill your pocketbook all right your refrigerator stays on all the time 24 7 your stove doesn't only when you cook it is not designed to be your heating device and if you're in a situation like this where you're using it as a heating device you need to talk to your landowner your property manager or your landlord and say hey could you please fix the heat okay and if he doesn't she doesn't your other recourse could be the board of health all right this is brother teacher be blessed stay warm it's winter time look forward to some more great videos they're coming so long